We're talking about the acting. Uh, they're not here to speak for themselves, but Edward James Olmos and Mary McDonald, to me, are the case studies of how to deliver in such an unbelievably understated way. I mean, I, I can imagine reading the script and it says, Adama, get me the president. <laughs> but when he says it, I mean, it, it's like spine tingling with that gravelly <laughs> voice. Can I just tell a quick story? Um, <laughs> as most of you know, first season I was running around with Grace on the uh, planet, so I really didn't get the opportunity to act. I'm not complaining in any way, trust me. <laughs> trust me. But uh, when I finally got the opportunity to act with Eddie or some of my other castmates, um, especially like Eddie, uh, we were doing this scene and I just forgot that I was sort of in the scene. The first take. Absolutely forgot because I was just watching him sort of transfix. Because like... I'm sitting there watching Edward James almost, right? Like, you know, I'm watching him and then it was like, he said, and then he starts looking at me and then he gets this funny look on his face and I'm like, oh Jesus Christ. Mine, mine, mine. Can we do that again? But, you know, for a while there, it took a while for really for me to actually get used to the idea that I was acting with Everett James almost Mary McDonald, and on top of that, the, the rest of our cast, everyone is so damn talented. Tell me this man doesn't get nominated next year, and if he doesn't, that's a crime. Uh, yeah, as uh, you might be able to tell, I'm a fan of Firefly, but um, I'm just curious, uh, what <laughs> other sci-fi shows? Universe. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm curious, what other sci-fi shows and in particular uh, series of Star Trek have influenced each of you as performers, writers, or whatever your job may be in the aspect of the show? I, I caught a show called Space 1999 when I was growing up. Yeah. That's always seemed to me quite dark. I don't know why, the, it, I, Landau, what's his first name? Martin, Martin Landau, yeah, he just had that kind of look about him and they were on this moon base alpha. Yeah, I found that uh, very exciting. I love the genre, that's one of mine. I still watch Star Wars, I watched it on the plane flying over here. <laughs> which, which, which one? Uh, well, uh, the only three that count. <laughs> And my all-time hero is John Candy. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, personally, my all-time all favorite sci-fi series is, is B5. Yeah. And, and before that, there's a little appreciated show called Blake's Seven. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, Blake 7, in many respects, was more worthy for its time because you see a lot of things in Blake 7, a lot of character interactions that you never would have seen in another TV series. De yeah, character people die in, 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 in Blake 7. Blake um, disappeared. Yeah, that's the whole Blake thing. It's yeah, called yeah. Blake 7, and Blake kind of disappeared. I, I, that, that influences B5, I believe. Um, well, Straczynski has said it's influenced him in, in his character development. And I think we are also the benefactors of B, what B5 did. The whole the arc, a lot of things that B5 did was, was just took one step further and we've taken it one step further around behind. So I'm a big B5 for, for many reasons. I can appreciate from both the sci-fi, I'm a huge fan. I mean, it's like you just sit there transfixed. And at the same time, I look at it and look what they did and look where we're still benefiting from. So it's, it's, it's also more breaking. I'm a huge fan of that. I'll just say I was a big fan of Lost in Space growing up. That was, <laughs> that was, that was my, my favorite show. I was a fan of the original Star Wars. I grew up in the north and my parents subjected me to, um, well, I wasn't allowed cable. So if you guys, if there's any Canadians in the room and you know anything about, there we are, Canadians. I, I was raised on CBC. So, you know, I had the option of like Disney on Sunday and Danger Bay. And uh, of course, and Beachcombers, of course. Beachcombers, of course. Do you guys remember seeing things? I'm going totally off topic here, but. That's a great show too, right? But Star Wars, I, I mean Star Trek, the original series, they always, uh, they always showed that. I used to, I wanted to be James T. Kirk, man. I just, I thought he was the coolest cat. And then in terms of movies, Blade Runner of all time, one of my favorites, still. Too bad she won't live, but then again, who does? I said, it's too bad she won't live, but then again, who does? That was, that was Eddie's line. I think for me, um, 
I, t I draw inspiration uh, as a writer uh, the mechanisms of all the shows that have been uh, mentioned here. But in terms of the writing, I actually find myself much more inspired by Aaron Sorkin. I, I worship that man uh, because he, he, he understands dialogue. And even though some of the dialogue is not the way real people speak, you don't care. You want people to speak that way because you care about them so much. His attention to character and character development, that's what, that's what I aim for in the writing that I do. We're over here with, uh, yeah, Angelo. Hi, Hi John Richard. Um, I, the show is great, and I think one of the things that is never done, I don't think it's done too much in any other sci-fi show, is the environment. I think if I, you know, Star Trek goes to an environment and then they change the environment. In Battlestar, the new Battlestar, the environment changes all the characters, and I especially consider Rosalind, who is deep-hearted, a good character, but at the end of last season, she rigs the election because she's so desperate to kind of keep things in some kind of order. And I think that aspect of Battlestar is so amazing that the effect of political environment and the war and love and um, sacrifice changes everybody because that's really what happens. So my question is, uh, when you guys get the script or when you're looking at that kind of environmental change like what happened with Rosalind, I mean, I, my jaw just hit the floor when that element came out. And that's the thing that I always talk to my friends about. And this second season, I learned that four or five of my non-science fiction friends had started watching the show because of the same things that you know Joe was talking about, which is, it's just, you know, it's a great, group of people who are just interacting with each other. So my question is, does the environment, does, when you get your scripts, are you privy to that kind of stuff, or are you just as shocked as I am when I, when I see it? Yeah, yeah. go ahead and get it. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I get the scripts off fairly early, and I also, um, sometimes the writers will contact me very early on in the writing, so, um, and, and I believe me, I don't care how early I get the, get the story, it's, it's always a shocker. I just sit there and it's like, if, I, if it comes in the mail that day, I go, I run straight, I don't care what I got the rest of the evening, I come and it open. I mean, I think, I think one thing, one reason Galactic is so good is that not only is every single person who is on it, who works on it, every single person is a fan. And when I get a Galactic script, it's a treat. And I just run home, rip it open, I'm glued, and I'm like, Jesus! <laughs> and, and, just, just wait. <laughs> I want to get on that mailing list. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, um, my question is, um, as you know, Jamie Bamber just recently did the cover of Out Magazine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. And some interesting interior photos as well. Yes. Um, the question is, in, a, in these series like Trek, like Firefly, <laughs> like Battlestar, um, they're so blind to gender and race and they're so all-inclusive. And do you think that there will ever be a gay or lesbian character in Gay does. <laughs> yeah, and I have the comedy reel, which basically confirms that. <laughs> Ron, Ron has said that, um, given that this is a cross-section of humanity, we have no problem with doing a, a, a story that in, includes gay or lesbian characters. We don't want it to be a um, Detroit, and we don't want to do the gay story. We want it to be just a naturally occurring part of it, and so it wouldn't surprise me just that I can't guarantee it, but I, I'm sure you'll see it eventually. I just don't think it'll, be, it'll stand out to the degree where we're saying, hey, everybody, do a gay story. You know, it'll, it'll be and it'll be on Who would you like to see? Um, <laughs> which, which, which characters? Men, men everywhere, I think we all want to see Trisha and, and Katie. <laughs> Where are we? Over here? <laughs> Moving right along. 